Welcome everybody. Uh, this is our first report out uh, and a contributor celebration from the Turing Way. And this contribution celebration is mostly for uh, our book dash attendees who've been working with us for the entire week, but not just them. We have a lot of other people who, who are contributors who are on this call, uh, who, has, who have been working with us for several years. So thank you for joining us. We are also very delighted to have you here. Uh, as the first part of our uh, call, we're going to make sure that we all know each other. Uh, so please introduce yourself in three words, uh, your name, where are you joining from, and uh, anything joyful that you have experienced recently. So let me start with who I am. I'm Malvika Sharan. I am uh, one of the leads of the Turing Way. I'm joining from Denmark, but I work in London. And uh, what brought me joy is I'm, I'm, I'm just, I've just been able to work on Book Dash on, on my own as the Book Dash planning committee took over all responsibilities. So I'm so joyful about that and really, really grateful for everything that they have done the entire week. Um, so now I'm going to hand it to Kirsty. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for being here. Um, I'm Kirsty Whitaker. I am um, the program director for the Tools, Practices and Systems program at the Alan Turing Institute. And I lead the Turing Way with Malvika. Um, although I, I feel like I'm getting more and more further away from it. So mostly I, I, um, I'm, I remain excited to witness everyone else leading and contributing and creating um, alongside us. I'm joining from Greenwich where I live near the water with my um, nearly 12 year old dog, Luna. And um, the, the book dash itself is very joyful for me, but the example that I'm going to, the, the joy that I'm going to share is that last night, um, the Turing Way was nominated for an award for the, uh, by, uh, for an award ceremony hosted by Open UK. And also two young people were, um, two young contributors were nominated for the, Young Person Award. Uh, so Sam Van Strood, who contributes to a project called the Turing Data Sto called Turing Data Stories, won that prize, which is absolutely amazing. So he's a, a student at UCL, and that was such an excitement. Um, but I actually had a huge amount of fun connecting with Paul Loicho, who was our technical writer as part of the Google Season of Docs this time last year. Um, and he has contributed hugely to the Turing way, particularly to the documentation, the templating, the style guide. And it was just brilliant, even though it was a virtual award ceremony. We had a networking session. And so I got to like hang out with him for a little bit and catch up with how he's doing in his PhD and just the really exciting work that he's doing right now. So that was that was my um, that was my big joy from last night. It was great. Yeah, and then Paul was also shortlisted in that particular category, which is so amazing. As Kirsty was saying, there's so many brilliant projects and people that being shortlisted is such an honor. Thanks, Kirsty, for being there. Um, gonna pass it to Vicky. Morning, um, I'm Vicky, and I'm the community manager at the Turing Institute for the Turing Roche Partnership. Um, I'm joining from slightly cloudy East London um, and something that brought me joy this is book dash related is that I merged my chapter this morning um, I already had done a test merge but this one felt like a proper merge um, which is exciting because I basically never used GitHub before this week so feeling very proud what do you think Nina hello um, I'm Nina, I'm a PhD student at the University of Bristol and I am currently in Wales where it's also quite cloudy and rainy, so not much different to everywhere else. Um, and something that brought me joy this week, there have been lots of things, um, specifically today I got a gingerbread man from the bakery, <laughs> which is very exciting and has really made my day so far, so that's been good. Don't tell us how that tastes. But it sounds great. <laughs> Aida. Hi, so I'm Aida Mehonic. I am a research, uh, no longer a research application manager. My new job title that I 
have as of sort of 10 days ago is I'm a TPS senior researcher and I look after research applications together with a team of research application managers, um, of which Alden is one, she's also on this call. Um, I am joining from East London as well, Vicky. I'm in Hackney Wick specifically, so um, I wonder how close we are. Um, it's also rainy, um, no surprises there. My joy this week has been actually meeting in person for the first time ever with Alden and Jennifer. So they're the other two research application managers. We, um, they, you know, we met in July during their interviews. We sort of spoke a lot. We started working. Well, now it's almost coming to the end of Alden's first month. And yesterday, for the first time ever, we came together as a team in real life and had a spectacular breakfast. Um, so, and it was even sunny. So that was completely perfect. Congrats on the new promotion. It's it's like we've been saying that for several days, but this is happening. All right, Alden. Well, um, I either pretty much covered everything. <laughs> I work at the Turing Institute in uh, TPS as a research application manager, and I am in London where it's actually it's stopped raining, so that's good. I'm gonna go for a walk after this. Um, and yeah, my my thing that brought me joy is the same. She stole my idea. So <laughs> but I was going to say we had we had an awesome breakfast. Um, great to just hang out in person and eat good food and just get to finally chat and get to know each other a little bit in, in real life. So it was great. Amazing. Um, Achindi, are you able to talk? Okay, I'm going to skip over it and come back to him in a bit. Um, yes, so I'm going to go to Patricia. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Patricia Hatterich. I'm a research data specialist working at the Digital Curation Center, and I'm joining from Edinburgh in, the, in Scotland, where it's currently, it stopped raining, but it's a bit on and off today. Um, and what brought me joy uh, just before joining this, uh, I, I did a, like an online Zumba class. So I think the fact is the fact that I got into the habit of dance exercise is, is something that definitely lifts my, my mood. Thanks for joining Patricia. Jess. Hello, hi, I am Jess Cope. Uh, I'm data services lead at the British Library. Um, and what brought me joy recently is that although my wife was away for a few days, that didn't bring me joy, but it meant that my cat spent a lot more time with me um, up here in the office, mostly on that sofa. So that was that was kind of nice. Sounds fantastic. Kozo, uh, would you like to go next? I'm Kozo. I'm a research engineer at Weekend Japan. Um, I'm interested in reproducible research. So uh, I'm not familiar with the Turing way, but I came here to find out what it looks like. I'm sorry, I don't have uh, any particular opinions, but I'm happy to hear your discussion. Thanks. Brilliant. Thanks for joining. Um, so I'm going to actually start going to people who have their video off, but they can tell me uh, in the chat that they don't want to speak. So, uh, Laura. Hi everybody, I'm Laura. I'm a PhD student at the University of Essex um, and I, I do sometimes contribute to the Turing Way, although I wasn't able to join this book back. Um, so I'm excited to hear what everybody's been up to. And something that brought me joy recently was meeting my friend's six-week-old baby, who was very cute that I got to meet last weekend. Amazing, and I can hear your birds in the background. So always delighted to be greeted by them. Uh, Achintya, are you back? 
Probably not. Achinte has, has already told us that he had to step out for a few minutes. Uh, Michaela. Hi, yeah. um, I'm Michaela. Um, I'm currently in Sydenham, London at my mum's house, um, but I also kind of float between Manchester and London. Um, I am a recent PhD graduate from the University of Leeds and I'm currently applying for a job at the Turing Way, so hello. I'm um, so here to just learn, listen, see what everyone's been up to. Um, and something that's brought me joy this week, uh, well, was, yeah, last Saturday, went to go see salmon jumping in the Yorkshire Dales. So it's my favorite thing to do in autumn, seeing salmon jump up waterfalls, it's just the best. So if anyone ever goes to Yorkshire in autumn, I'd highly recommend. That's a very good recommendation to have. Um, Margaret cannot speak, she's in a noisy room, but she's just very kindly added her introduction in the chat. She's Margaret joining from Nairobi, Kenya. The thing that's bringing her joy uh, right now is coffee. It's been a busy week, so the coffee is keeping her awake until this week comes to an end. So she has been our very brilliant book dash attendee. And she's also making her first contribution to the Turing Way. And we're not merging her PR yet, but it's brilliant. It just needs one image. And we will actually show you some of the images that we're, we've been working on together. Um, all right, I'm gonna just quickly check, Murray, are you? Um, Going to tell us, unmute and yeah, amazing. Go for it. Hi. Um, so I'm Marie. Um, I'm a I'm an experienced speech and language therapist from the Philippines. I'm friends with Kirsty. <laughs> we, we we have coffee chats um, during weekdays. Um, so, uh, but but yeah, uh, but I'm also a postgraduate student at UCL. Um, still a master's student, but I'm on I'm writing my thesis now, and hopefully I finish by January. And then perhaps I'm also planning to do a PhD in philosophy of science at UCL. So hopefully next year, if I get funding, I'll be back there. But I'm in the Philippines now. So the background here, it, that's a view from the plane, and that's the Philippines. So, and it's nighttime here now, so it's very dark. So what, what gave me joy today is um, <laughs> earlier today, I, I baked potatoes, but it was bland. So I, I tweeted about it and my scientist friends um, lectured me about what I did wrong. And I learned a lot <laughs> in the process. Yeah, and brought, brought me joy because it, it reminded me of my first very English Christmas dinner where I really enjoyed the roast potatoes. And I was in Swanage. So it reminded me of Swanage. And I missed it going back there. <laughs> All amazing, all amazing stuff. Thank you for joining so late. So with that, uh, thanks once again. I hope I did not miss out anybody. Uh, if I did, please uh, let me know in the chat. But the next thing we're gonna do is one of the really exciting one is do a quick demo from people who had joined us um, in the book dash first, and then folks who have previously contributed to the Turing Way and there's something that you're thinking about and you'd like to share with us, uh, please also let us know either in the HackMD or chat and we'll make time for you. So with that, uh, I'm going to pass this to Vicky if you're ready to do a demo. Yes, hang on. <laughs> uh, yeah, here I am. I'll just share my screen. Cool. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Cool. Yeah. Um, to make knowledge kind of open and free. Um, and then added kind of sections on how to do open access. So kind of preprints, open access publishing, uh, green open access is so self archiving. And then kind of edited the why you should share your research openly section. And then also added a new section on the future of open access. Um, which I think will be really useful because we can kind of update at any time and keep people up to date with what's going on. Um, so what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, so it was really, really useful because I was a newcomer to GitHub. So it was really useful to have everyone's support in kind of putting this together. Um, I would say what I would like to learn next and what Kirsty suggested I should do actually is kind of editing the GitHub locally 
um, because there was definitely a bit where I was adding loads of text and I was scared I was going to accidentally close the tab and lose hours of work. So I would definitely not recommend doing it that way. Um, and it was really useful to get feedback from everyone. So I've had um, quite a few reviews. Ariel gave me a really good um, suggestion for a paragraph on making it very clear that open access really differs in terms of fields and disciplines and that there's no right way to do it. Um, that it is best practice and we think it is, but actually there's a lot of limitations and you shouldn't feel kind of pressured to do it. So I think that was a really, really nice addition to add in. Um, yeah, and I think that covers everything. Next, I'm going to be perhaps kind of working on this um, to review it a bit more. Um, Emma Karoon's got some edits on it that we might um, add in. And then also uh, Lena, who I don't think is on the call, is working on a peer review chapter. So I think a kind of discussion and what I want to work on next is potentially having a kind of a chapter in the guide for communication on publishing in general maybe moving this open access chapter there, having a peer review chapter, having kind of guides on, on how to publish, I think would be really, really valuable. So really looking forward to working with the Turing Way community on that. I think that's everything from me. That's amazing. Can we have some virtual claps and emojis and all that thing? All right. So now we have Achintya back, which is amazing setup. And I'm going to check with Achintya if he would like to give us a quick demo and also introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, happy to introduce myself. I was away for a few minutes. So when you say demo, what am um, what I? Is what demo? is demo? Exactly. What is demo? Demo is uh, when uh, people in the book dash are going to quickly tell us what they have done. And if they would like to, they can share screen and show us as well. If you're not ready, we can move to another contributor. Yeah, I don't have a, a screen to share. And most of the stuff that I did was reviewing um, other people's pull requests. I reviewed a bunch of them um, over the course of the last few days. Um, so anyway, my name is Achit Rao. I am the uh, community manager for the AI for Science and Government Research Program at the Alan Turing Institute and um, have a background in science communication. So um, over the last few days, I was also reacquainting myself with with GitHub workflows because it's been a while since I've worked in a collaborative way with anyone. So it was it was a pleasure for me to do that. Um, I also was able to to work with one of our contributors, Lena, on making her uh, creating her first issue and making her first couple of pull requests because it's just something new for her. And I also learned along the way how not to do things because we made some slight um, uh, mini errors that we probably would have not done with, with more experience, but that's one of the things that I really value about the Turing Way as a project, that it's not just this front-facing book that everyone can, um, can read and contribute to, but it's also space for people to learn how to develop some of these uh, collaborative skills. Working with GitHub uh, is, an, is a big one, and I, I like the fact that there are no strict uh, rules and predefined workflows for how people have to do this. And there's an opportunity for people to, to break things because there's experts on hand to help fix them. So that was extremely valuable for me to also feel a bit safe to, to do these things in a collaborative way. Um, so the last few days, I did a, did a few reviews as well. Minor stuff, looking at grammar, looking at whether the, the in-house style uh, for things like line breaks and things were applied, helping to check for links, um, whether they're correct, and just reviewing any of the new material that's been added. And it was, it was a lot of fun. I think I particularly valued the um, the few days of a shared collaborative space for us to work in, like this virtual space. So having uh, shared pomodoros where we can go away and say this time is assigned for us to work, and then we come back and we discuss what we've done. It's extremely valuable to not feel like you're doing stuff by yourself, um, and it's it's great to just learn about what other people are doing and get inspired as you as you go ahead. So I've really enjoyed the last few days working on this. My first book dash, by the way, and I'm hoping for many more. Thank you, Achinte. And I think your demo is definitely a great example of how much work doesn't actually appear somewhere. It's so much of mentorship and reviewing and talking. And you basically sat with me troubleshooting a problem that you didn't know much about, which is already so much support that you know I felt accountable. So thank you so much. Again, 
please give uh, Achintya some love, some emoji, some claps and all that. And next is Nina. Hello. Um, right, I am going to share my screen so I can show you what we've been doing. Okay, can you see the preview on the screen? Cool. So this is my second book dash and a lot of this book dash ended up being me working and to finish the things that I started the first book dash. It takes a surprisingly long time I found now, now I know, to actually get everything together and into the book in a way that you're actually happy with and yeah so it's it's taken a while but we have got there and I'm excited that this is the preview but it's nearly ready to merge it's it's basically just completing the final checks and then I think it's ready so this is the preview but it will be up very soon and it's a chapter on self-reflection in the uh the guide to ethical research and what it does is it takes you through a summary of why it's important to do self-reflection, why that might be, why it might help us do better science and also um, help us document things that we make assumptions about as well, which probably also makes our science much more reproducible too. Um, and it talks a bit about who the influences are. So there's lots of very important people who've influenced the idea of self-reflection in science. And so we've talked about some of them too. Um, and it goes through some ideas that are important to think about in terms of what it means to have your lived experiences being what they are and how they've influenced how you think and what you think is important to you and how you interpret all sorts of different types of data as well. So a lot of the idea of this chapter is just to like provide some thinking space for people and to maybe prompt them to think about the, their position as a scientist in a way that maybe they might not have considered before. Um, and it's very much aimed at people who are beginning that, so it, it tries to explain everything and give loads of prompts so that people can kind of work from um, loads of questions, which I always find makes it easier when people ask me questions rather than having to just go off and, and work out who I am and what I think, that's much, much harder. So um, there's loads of prompts. There's um, another section which is kind of talking about once we kind of know who we are as ourselves, we have to understand that in the context of power and privilege, especially in science and data science, which has, we may not think about them if like, if it doesn't directly affect you, you might not think about it so much, um, but there are lots of structural issues that present in the way that data science works and who can work in data science and who has worked in data science up to now and the kinds of problems that we try and solve in data science. It talks about some of that. Um, intersectionality has a little a little note down there and and then there was a page of prompts because like I said I like prompts because I find them very helpful and hopefully other people do too <laughs> so there's questions about uh who you are there's questions about what's in your research environment about knowledge and what you think about knowledge about your research topic and also about your data um yeah and then there's just some resources at the end for things that you might find useful or interesting to read afterwards. Um, Kirsty. Yeah, yeah, I, I love this so much and you're getting quite a few comments in the chat that also really, really love the content and love the work. So thank you so much for doing it. The, the prompts, so I was wondering if you could say, obviously, when would you reckon when i think is my question when would you recommend that people to kind of reflect on those on those prompts and maybe your answer is all the time because uh that might be that might be the correct one but what if you're thinking about like a new phd student for example starting um what what would your sort of guidance be for when they should sit down with this page my dream would be all the time it's probably not realistic for most people. So I think that's a really good question. Um, I would say, especially when you're starting a new project, probably if you're starting a, a project on a new topic that you've not um, worked on before. And I think this is especially important when those topics are social um, or even like we, were, we had a chat yesterday as part of the book that about um, medical data and how structural 
injustices in the medical system seep into the medical data that we're using. So I think I feel like every time you work with a new data source um, or a new type of data or a new thing that you're trying to measure and understand, it's a good time just to have, even if it's just five minutes, just to think, where's this data from? Who made it? What what things or what biases could have crept into the way that this data was made? Um, and also, what are my assumptions about this topic? And where do I get those assumptions from? Uh, and what are they founded on? And whose knowledge are they based on? So those sorts of questions, I think, are quite handy. So yeah, I'll stop sharing. And also to say that this was very exciting because we had Ali working on it. We had Laura and Ismail and Ariel at the last book dash working on it. And then Emma and Malvika have just done the most amazing review on it. So this is like a big team effort. It's very exciting. And yeah, well done everyone. Once again, yeah, the, read all the chat. This is really amazing, a really great addition. And I'm really excited for this to go live as Laura is saying in the chat. Thanks so much, Nina. Uh, so we have Margaret, who I checked privately. Margaret wrote a sub chapter and I asked if she would like to demonstrate her chapter and she thinks that her contribution is too minute, which I don't agree. But also because Margaret is in a very noisy room, what I'm gonna do is share my screen um, and show you what she's done. And Margaret, please do feel free to correct me <laughs> if uh, I don't explain it properly. So Margaret uh, is uh, one of the first contributors. It's the first time that she joined us in the book dash and also the community. And she took the first few days to get to know the projects, how to, uh, you know, how the files are organized. As you can see, we have 200 or more files. It, it can make you feel a bit dizzy. Um, and she wrote a sub chapter within the guide for reproducible research and research data management called documentation and metadata which is super important uh, for us to share data. And I love what, what the first sentence stands for, having data available is of no use if, if it cannot be understood. And she's written some uh, standards around metadata. Uh, we are gonna add an example of how metadata actually looks like. She's added a template. And as I said, we'll also add uh, an image in here. So this is a massive, in my opinion, so I don't think these are small contributions. So thank you so much, Margaret. And let's uh, give her some virtual applause and thank you and everything. Awesome. So now with that, I'm gonna pass it to Kirsty, who's also one of the contributors in the book dash and to let us know what her experience was from the event. Oh no, oh no, I've done truly nothing <laughs> this week. Um, I have, yeah, so I, my, my kind of contribution is, is similar in, in, um, style, I suppose, to Achintia's in that really where I was most useful in the week was, um, hope, I hope I encouraged <laughs> some people, um, and I had a really nice, I had a really, a couple of really useful conversations, um, with two of the participants who I'm just scanning are, are not here. Um, Melissa wanted to dig into our collaboration guide. And the collaboration guide, the structure, um, there's a chapter in there, which is tools for collaboration. And the problem is that you don't usually go looking for tools for collaboration. You go looking for the type of collaboration that you want to have. And then probably tools need to be inside of that because you'll, you'll then go and find them um, once you sort of, when you have a purpose. So that purpose for collaboration might be uh, running a virtual meeting. It might be trying to set, find a time to have a one-to-one -one meeting. Um, you might be running uh, an online event or you might be doing something asynchronous. So thinking about, um, you know, conversations in a Slack workspace or documents that you can all collaboratively edit in your own time. And so that was a really fun conversation where, because Melissa was also quite new to the project. Um, and so she, she was sort of asking, how can I, how can I edit this chapter? And the, the hard part is, well, 
as the book has grown, and I, I just want to sort of emphasize what Malvika said when she was talking about Margaret's contribution, the project actually now is so large that it, it really, there really is quite a long sort of phase of discovering what's already there. And then, and then the next piece, which is what I was working on with Melissa, is given that we have all of this content, how can we curate it? How can we move it around? How can we sort of reframe it, make it more useful? And that's a really, for me, that's a really, really interesting conversation to have. And it's one of our sort of, I think it's one of the innovations of the Turing way, which is that we don't leave text as static once it's there. And so someone contributes, someone writes it, um, but it might change. Like Vicky's is a great example of, you know, we wrote the, the chapter on open access, I think three years ago now, and things change. And I'm, I was like scared and excited by the idea of having a section at the bottom that said future of open access, because that feels like that's gonna go out of date really, really fast. But it's, it's sort of part of the, the excitement comes from the fact that we are a living book. And so where I then helped Melissa was <laughs> trying to make sure that she didn't bite off more than she could do, because actually when you start looking at sort of rearranging or moving things around or changing things, it can become a very, very big task. And, um, and so we worked a little bit to just identify a sort of smaller contribution uh, that she could, that she could um, work on and, and make her, her pull request. Um, I also had a really interesting conversation with Anka, who is who was thinking about uh, reproducible data pipelines, and he comes from a, a genetics um, lab, a lab that sort of builds software to do reproducible analyses on, um, I think, insect genetics, but it might be it might be broader than that. It's a tool called Intermine, and so we had a really great conversation about provenance and about kind of modular steps along a pipeline. And we also talked quite a lot about how there can be this problem of having the perfect be the enemy of the good when you're learning about reproducible pipelines, because actually to be perfectly reproducible, particularly when you have very large or very computationally demanding data sets or research questions, it's it can feel like a wall that is like so high that you could never kind of climb over it. And so what he is working on in his chapter, and, and I think this is a great, a great choice, is encouraging people to think more about a mindset of reproducibility rather than like a perfect kind of, did you achieve perfect reproducibility? So a little bit similar to what I was saying at the beginning of, planning at the start to know that people are going to use your code or they might use the data or you might need to come back and check something um, rather than putting content into the book that says, that leads people to think, if you don't do this, then you're not reproducible and sort of that kind of binary of like, yes or no, and trying to move away from that a little bit. So I think those were my two probably most helpful um, contributions to the book. Otherwise, my dog and I rocked up on our evening dog walks to the 5 p.m. UK time session. I listened to fascinating discussions. The one group I want to, because they're not represented here, I think, the one group that I just want to shout out that I feel I contributed nothing to, but they blow my mind with how much work they're doing is the translation workflow group. Um, they're looking at moving from one platform to another platform. They were thinking really carefully about making sure that the work hasn't that has been done, particularly with the Spanish translation, isn't lost along the way in that move. That's really important. Um, but the new platform includes some machine translation. So that's kind of like putting the text into um, Google Translate. And they were discussing how, you know, the machine translation is not perfect. It needs a, a speaker to be able to kind of go through and correct the errors. 
but it's so much faster. You can correct the errors so much faster than, um, than generating the text in the first place. So uh, that was uh, Batul, Andrea and Alejandro, but there's a huge team of people who've been working on the translation more broadly. And I, I listened into their discussions with the artist yesterday and just was blown away by, um, by, by the amount of thought and the, and the possibilities for scaling the Turing way into multiple languages. Um, just really, really excited about that. I'm done. That's, that's an enormous amount of work and another example of how a lot of contributions aren't visible. Um, thank you so much, Kirsty, for hanging out for the entire time. And with that, I think it's time to take 10 minutes break. And when we come back, I'm going to hand it over to Esther, who's going to do a preview of all the illustrations that we have generated. And then we'll leave some time for us to have open discussion. And these illustrations are amazing. So yeah, I'm not going to do the spoiler. Uh, please take a break and come back in 10 minutes, uh, wherever you are in your own time. I have to say, I consider myself to be a, a reasonably skilled human. I think everyone here is reasonably skilled humans. But what I've learned in the last um, two years or just under two years is remembering to click record on a Zoom room is wildly outside of my skill set. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I even tell this story every time. And I still very rarely remember to actually click recording. Um, Malvika, are you having to go and do some teaching right now? Would you like to say goodbye and I'll, I'll take over hosting responsibilities? Yes, please take over the hosting responsibility. I don't have to teach, but we only have one room blocked, which is the room where everyone's teaching and uh, learning how to version control at the moment, which is pretty good. Yes, please. But you are teaching. You. you are teaching later on today, I think. Yeah, in an hour. I'm teaching in an right. hour. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you go have some lunch, get a little bit of prepared for teaching a Turing Way uh, workshop, and thank you so much. Thank you for for organizing and and hosting and. Uh, by hosting, I mean you can make me the host, and then I will introduce Esther, and Esther will uh, will talk us through the the illustrations, which I I hope you are all as excited as me. To um... all done, thank you so much. Brilliant. Take care, Malvika. I hope the workshop goes really well. Um. So yeah. So that's my um. If you're if you're back and you don't have your video on, if you could just give like a little emoji uh response, a little something like this, then I know know that you're here I think we've got uh, yeah this is great we've got a couple of, we've got yes you're all here you're all here that's great so um back from the little break and thank you to everyone for going through their contributions really really exciting um pieces of work and Esther would you like to um drive us forward are you able to share your screen you should be able to perfect um and yeah so so take us through some of these beautiful illustrations yeah, so um, just to clarify that I did not make these illustrations. These were done by two artists that joined us during the book dash, uh, Matt and Katya, uh, which were, yeah, it's a really integral part of the book dash now, I would say, where everyone uh, gets an opportunity to talk to the artists uh, and then magic happens and then you get beautiful illustrations like the one that you currently see in, in uh, on your screen on translation management system. So this one was, I think, done by Batou and Alejandro and Andrea. Um, and yeah, well, I think the image speaks for itself, uh, but it's trying to visualize the process that they're setting up, which uh, Kirsty highlighted earlier. If I can then hopefully go to the next. Yes. Uh, so this one on reproducible, scalable and shareable environmental data science uh, was, I think, done uh, by Alejandro. And I think maybe Kirsty had something to do with that. Maybe a little bit. OK, then I won't ask you to clarify. But if at some point I'm, I'm hitting your image uh, and please feel free to unmute and to explain it better than I do, because, uh, yeah, <laughs> you made it so you know the story better. Uh, but this one is, I think, really nice. I think Katya said it was quite complicated to do this one and she was very proud of it. So 
one of the highlights. Um, this one is done uh, together with Sophia, and I think it presents a logo of a project that she's working on. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, but this is actually the only one where there's multiple colors in the images, uh, and I, I quite like that. Kirsty. I can explain this one a little bit. So um, this is for a project called Ort Spaces, which is a citizen science platform that's um, open source, and it's built in collaboration with autistic people. And um, yeah, the so the infinity symbol is commonly associated with the neurodiversity movement or community. Um, and the using the whole rainbow colors is also sort of part of that kind of uh, embracing the, the many different dimensions that, in which you can be neurodivergent. Uh, so folks here are interacting and they have different sensory um, experiences, but the, they, they will all be, um, they'll pop up in various different places around this open source citizen science platform that we're building. Thank you. Yes, do please interrupt. <laughs> And this one is on publishing reproducibly, uh, which is done by Emma, uh, which is also um, yeah, visualized in the image uh, about how she wanted to add not just data and software uh, to being able to publish reproducibly, but also the protocols. Uh, so she wanted to improve an existing image from a publication, I think, to something that contained more of the um the aspects of of publishing reproducibly so it's a very nice golden chest and then this one is uh, done by ariel um, basically on different roles in the research infrastructure that are uh, playing a key role in scientific research but are not necessarily researchers themselves so you can see data stewards research software engineers uh, research application managers and very importantly community managers which is uh, what Ariel is doing uh, and here she wanted to um, basically create an image for the entire chapter and having several images integrated and I think that worked very well. Um, this one was also a bit of a challenge. Uh, this one was done by Ankur on uh, software infrastructure. And I think uh, Katya got a crash course on, on what that actually means. Uh, but I think she managed to uh, very clearly describe all the, the things you need in order for a reproducible uh, pipeline uh, to get where you want it uh, to be. So this is a very nice image, very uh, hard labor there. And this one is one which I think Emma was involved with, um, but it's basically on data safe haven. So I, I think this is for the uh, sensitive data chapter that Emma, uh, Marta, Maria are working on. And then this one is on documentation. This is uh, something which uh, Lena came up with. Uh, basically that documentation is, uh, the guiding lights through the darkness in doing research. And uh, I think this is applicable to data as well as software. Uh, so yeah, this is a gorgeous image. This one is on recognition for research software engineers, which are normally working very hard and very long on to get stuff working, uh, but are not always recognized for these type of outputs. Uh, so this one is done by uh, Farouk and Abel um, and yeah, basically highlighting the, the contributions that research software engineers uh, do for scientific research. And this is a similar image, but then a little bit uh, different, but also about getting credits for research software. Uh, but this is basically highlighting how you could practically do that with citation files, uh, the CFF uh, file in which you can um, place the information that is needed for software citation. And that's a chapter that uh, they've been working on as well. And I think Carlos has also been involved with that, which is a very exciting chapter, very clear. Uh, then this one on remote collaboration, uh, which was done by Melissa. 
uh, is basically highlighting different tools, different uh, different people, different countries, all involved in uh, remote collaboration and how we should appreciate that. And I think it's just beautiful that they've illustrated that with food, which is just really one thing that can bring people together indeed. Then this one on peer review is, is kind of a collaboration between Lena and Jessica and uh, Kirsty because she brought in the wolf. Uh, and it's basically trying to highlight that instead of uh, reviewer two and, and basically being a barrier in peer review, uh, peer reviewers should be uh, constructive to the process so that in the end you get a better output or a, a, a house in stone that won't disappear after a little storm. And this one, I'm actually not 100% sure who was involved with this one. Oh, Kirsty, please. Yeah, this was Malvika and me. Um, and what we wanted to try and um, get across with this is that the pathways that people can follow through the Turing Way don't all need to be the same. So we don't necessarily want everyone to end up in the same place and we don't want everyone to kind of follow the exact same steps um it's really important that people are coming in to the Turing way and thinking of the Turing way not as a a, a a sort of command from the Turing that this is how you should behave but more that there are these these roads and these pathways um that people can follow and they take them to where they need to go so those experiences and individual stories are the really important part. Thank you. But then this one is one uh, that I was involved with. Uh, so I'm going to be biased and probably talk too long about this one, uh, but it's about how commercial uh, companies such as publishers um, can basically derail the system by wanting a lot of money uh, for their services, while well, we could also work around it with, um, yeah, basically open source software or using our own infrastructure to bring our research or research outputs to the public. Uh, and yeah, this is the the one thing involving Godzilla's and dragons. So this is definitely the best image. Sorry. Then this one is also, I, I, I find this one really beautifully done uh, with the fire chat. So maybe this is the best one. Um, there's no best one, of course. They're all very, very, they're all the best, so to say. Um, let me just stop rambling and tell you about the fireside chat image, uh, which is uh, a new event uh, that we have uh, for the Turing community. Uh, every second or third Friday, I think, but do correct me. Uh, there will be like an event where you can come together and learn from other communities and from the Turing, uh, Turing Way community, of course. And this is basically representing, yeah, casual chat, just getting to know each other and hanging out. And I think Emma was involved in constructing this one, not 100% sure. I think that's right, it was Emma. And I'll just jump in as well and say that one of the things we're hoping to do with the fireside chat is have them be across communities because there are so many open source communities that are, are working in, in very much in the same directions. And so we're hoping to, to invite people. So if you have any suggestions for people that you would like to hear discuss interesting topics, um, please, let, uh, please let us know because we, we're excited about this, this uh, series carrying on. Thanks, Gersi. And then this one was also Emma, I think, uh, basically trying to illustrate how the traditional way of fish of authorship does not necessarily acknowledge uh, everyone involved in the process, and that we should therefore acknowledge contributors instead of authors only, which I think is wonderfully done. Oh, and uh, this one is describing the role of the data stewards. So again, I'm probably going to be biased because I was involved in this one. Um, basically, how you as a data steward um, have the tools and uh, knowledge to 
improve best practices around data or facilitate exchange of data. And therefore the train of the researchers are, is gonna be able to actually run instead of um, falling off the tracks. Um, and this is also part of the, the research roles infrastructure chapter that Ariel has been uh, working on and I've been contributing there this week. So that's where this image is a part of. And then this one, I am also not 100% sure who was involved here, but it's very true. There's indeed no replacement for connections between people. Then an image on why share your work. So I think this may might be mm. Vicky. Yeah, this is for the open access one. Go ahead. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, so yeah, I think there's two. We did one on kind of ways to share your work openly. That might be next. And then this one I really liked. They did it as like a wish you were here, like the old train posters on like a better world on why you should share your work openly. Um, so kind of the different reasons and all of them um, about, yeah, why you should share openly. So kind of like reuse um, citations, but also kind of like the moral reasons. So publicly funded work. So yeah, the little ticket there paid for tax. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy of how that came out. It looks so nice. And also the little with Thomas the Tank Engine one in the top left. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. I like the avoid duplication of effort and funding uh, image as well, very nice. Oh, and this one is, I also actually have not, no idea who's done this one. So I'm probably not gonna do that, this one justice. But yeah, I think it speaks uh, yeah, mostly for itself that you, in order for your project to be useful, you need to take in the community needs and also their expertise from like different types of people, not just researchers. Oh, I think this might be your second yeah, one. Yeah, that's the other one I was talking about. So we were trying to like represent the green, gold, and then diamond, which is actually quite hard to do. Um, and they're kind of different routes because we we're trying to explain like you could do green and gold, you could just do green. So that's kind of the different routes on there. Um, but yeah, with the kind of train analogy still. Lots of trains, but this is very beautifully done indeed. Then this one, maybe Kirsty can jump in again. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that Malvika and I have been talking about quite a lot in the last sort of six months or so, a little while, is the fact that we think people have different definitions of the word collaboration. And so people will come and, and sort of think that they're joining a collaboration. But actually, if those two were, if people are using the word differently, then it's quite difficult to set the expectations. And so what we've broken down here this is based on a blog post actually, which I'll find and put in the chat, um, is we, we've broken up the idea of, of helping. So this is someone who comes along and, and sort of does a task that, that's been pre-designed and you know, well, probably anyone could kind of do it and you'd come along and you'd help out. And that feels good, right? That's still, that's still useful. That's still really, really nice. It's nice to be part of something. And then there's this concept of uh, cooperation. So everyone has their individual lanes, basically, and they have their individual kind of responsibilities and skills, but they line up those, those skills and those responsibilities to achieve a common goal. And, but the, the difference then from cooperation to collaboration is uh, that collaboration has a shared goal and everybody working together to find the best way that they'd be able to achieve that. So you, so you can kind of, you can step on people's toes or you can cross over into their space because it's, it's in having those conversations that you can create something that's, that's new, that's, that's different to what's been done before. And what we were trying to show with this kind of more modern, um, more diverse farm on the right-hand side is, a little bit of kind of technology coming in, some like old fashioned um, 
apple picking, just like in the in the first uh, in the helping section, uh, and thinking about making sure that the diversity is represented in the decision making and evolving um, where a project is going to go as you all learn and um, and work together. So that's where we're going with this uh, with the farm farm uh, evolution there. Very nice image. Yeah, please do share the blog post. I want to read it now. Thank you for reminding me. I've forgotten. Just <laughs> And here we have another train track. We we were on a on a on a roll, but on a track uh, again about dealing with sensitive data. So I think Emma and maybe Ed have been involved in creating this one. Um, yeah, I think the main message is is that you don't necessarily need to open up your data or all of your data in order to uh, facilitate reproducible research with sensitive data. Uh, but there's there's ways around this uh, so that you can still make your work uh, a bit more reproducible. And again, no binary definitions of that, of course. Then this one is, I think maybe Nina's. Do you want to? Yes, this is me. So this was about having lots of different people and. <laughs> It's kind of a few different concepts kind of together. So it was about having loads of different people making up a more complete um, whole. So if you have lots of people who are looking at something from the same place, then you don't get a very interesting picture at the end of it. Um, and so diverse teams are like what we want. Um, and they bring like different ideas in and people come from different backgrounds. And, and then there's a bit of like the self-reflection bit um, and the idea was kind of like the self-reflection allows us to see how we all fit together as well and how we can contribute things um, that other people like or like where things are missing in a whole and where we fit in. Yeah. Nice. Thanks so much for explaining. And I think that was actually the last one. I mean, yeah, I think that's the last one. Okay. So thanks to uh, Matt and Katya for these amazing images. I'm just going to stop sharing the screen. And I assume that at some point they will be available on Zenodo, uh, like the previous sets. But uh, since the images were only made like yesterday, the last one, that has not uh, happened yet. So uh, some patience for that, please. I think even at the beginning of this call, we didn't have all of those all of those illustrations. Um, the the artists were just unbelievably hard listening to these concepts and having to sort of translate them. They they do it live um, while we're talking, and and their creativity is just out of this world. So, yes, you're exactly right, Esther. We will um, we might send a little a couple of comments for feedback uh, if we want to change, make little tweaks sometimes to the text of some of the um, illustrations. And then once we get those back, we will upload them to the Zenodo repository and they'll join all the other illustrations that are up there. And what we did last time, which I think we'll probably do again, is ask for them to send us two copies, one with the text and one without, and that's to facilitate the translation um, activities as well, because otherwise you're sort of having to jump from reading in in Spanish, for example, back to English for the um, for the illustrations. So yes, they will they will absolutely appear. Thank you, Esther, for taking us through. Uh, we have about sort of twenty five minutes, and we haven't really had any moments for questions or discussion. Um, and so this is this is your your moment. Anyone's anyone's moment. If you have questions that you want to ask, if you have um, reflections that you want to that you want to share. Uh, I, I made this this joke earlier in the week that this is not a space where you have to be asking a question and you will be derided for making a comment. This is a discussion space. So if you just have something that you want to, to say, um, that is absolutely fine and very, very welcome. And if you'd like to write it in the chat, you're also very welcome to do so.
So I'll, I'll just take a moment. If you want to write the question or the comment in the chat, you can, but also you can raise your Zoom hand or you can, if your video is on, you can wave at me and um, just bring up any, any questions. That you have. Into, are you are you thinking of a question? No, I I'll ask a question for anyone who's joined the book dash. One of the things that I think is quite difficult is getting the right people uh, in the room for contributing to the book dash because you sort of have to know what a book dash is to know to apply for a book dash. Um, oh, Malvika said these sections are not recorded. Sorry. Okay, I will, uh, good point, I will, what I'm going to do before we stop the recording, thank you so much, good point, Cynthia, I think for noting that. What I'm going to do before I stop the recording is actually jump to the very end and um, just highlight the staying involved and feedback. So feedback we'll do off camera, that's fine, you can, you can feed that back uh, to us in any, any form that you want, you can do it in the hack and do, or you can, you can say it once I stop the recording. Um, but what we would really love is for everyone to stay involved. We have a Slack workspace that everyone is very welcome to join. And we have a monthly newsletter. The monthly newsletter is really dense. <laughs> like there's a huge amount that's going on inside of that newsletter. Um, but it is very, very useful. And if there are way, if anyone receives it and has the capacity to forward it out either to other mailing lists or to other colleagues, um, uh, collaborators, the students that they know, I would love to kind of spread the word a little bit more. We're running a workshop. I think Esther, are you running the workshop on Monday on a collaboration workshop? Um, Malvika's running one in uh, in thirty minutes in Denmark, and we have quite a lot of sort of opportunities that come up. And the Slack workspace or the newsletter are the best places to keep to keep an eye on those. Or we have a Twitter account, which is also a useful way for. Um, the connecting. Esther, thank you so much for putting that link in there. So please, and, and one of the ways in which you can contribute to the Turing Way is to spread the word of the Turing Way. So that is uh, that is a, a fabulously useful contribution. Um, and then in terms of staying involved, we're just really keen to, to hear people's feedback and uh, and stay in touch. So, so Slack workspace, um, newsletter, Twitter are the sort of main ways to sort of find out information but you can also send Malvika or I uh, an email and uh, and let us know if you have any more in-depth thoughts that why that would be more useful so I'll just put that at the end of the recording and I will now say thank you again and I will stop recording and then we will jump into the the questions or the broader discussion thanks again and thanks everyone for presenting all right